Hi everyone, uh, in this video I'm going to be going through BCA tables, which is a tool, it's like a new tool for your toolbox in answering stoichiometry questions. Um, so BCA stands for Before, Change, After, and it's basically a way for you to organize the more complex stoichiometry problems. When I'm really asking for a lot of information about one problem, and especially when I'm asking for how much of the excess reactant remains after the reaction's over, that's when a BCA table is going to be um, worth the time to do. There might also be times where we just kind of straight up ask you to do a BCA table because it is a really good way of organizing an entire reaction. So again, it uh, stands for before, change, and after. So I'm going to do one example just running through it, like what it would look like, and then I'll do a second example, which is like a normal stoichiometry problem, showing when a BCA table would be worth doing. All right, so for the first question here, uh, combustion occurs with, let me see if I can move this, with 77.0 grams of gaseous tricarbon hexahydride and 249 grams of oxygen gas. How many moles of each reactant and each product are present after this reaction? So, you know, this should start out looking like a familiar stoichiometry problem. Notice I gave you the grams of my first reactant. In this case, it's that hydrocarbon fuel that, um, in this case, C3H6, and I also told you grams of oxygen gas. So when I tell you both grams of both reactants, what do you have to do? You're gonna have to find limiting reactant. And notice what I'm asking. I'm asking not just like what mass of CO2 forms. I'm not just asking what mass of H2O forms. I'm asking for a lot of information. I'm saying how many moles of each reactant and each product are present after the reaction? They might say, well, hold on, isn't this first part super easy? Isn't it always just going to be zero because the reactants get used up? No. In a limiting reactant problem, one of the reactants is going to be used up. The other one's going to have a little bit left over. That's the excess. Now, it is possible under rare circumstances that both reactants are used up perfectly. We call this a perfect stoichiometric ratio, but it's very rare. In most cases, one reactant gets used up, limiting reactant, and the other reactant is still present, excess reactant. So whenever you're looking for a lot of information, specifically um, how much of the excess reactants remaining, a BCA table is going to be worth it. So here's how we do this. Well, you start with your regular equation, which I kind of began writing out here. So C3H6, I tell you it's gaseous, plus O2 gas yields CO2 gas plus H2O gas. Remember, in most combustion reactions, our products are gaseous. I purposely didn't balance this one because I want to do a quick refresher on it. Um, I've talked about my tips for this. So in terms of the letter order, I say these are hardcore problems. This is a combustion reaction, hardcore balancing problems, hardcore HCO. So I'm going to start with my H's. I see six here and two here. Uh, to balance this, I need a three. Is a three going to be okay? No, because that's going to give us an odd number of O's. So when in doubt, I'm going to double it. So instead of a three here, I'm going to put a six here. And instead of a one here, I'm going to put a two. Now for carbons, I have two C3s, which is six. So I'll put a six there. And now I just count my oxygens. So six times two is 12. Six times one is six. 12 and six is 18. So the answer is nine. So I have a two, nine, six, six ratio. Now we didn't do the BCA table yet. For a BCA table, underneath the mole ratio, on the left side, I'm going to write B, which stands for before, C, which stands for change, and A, which stands for after. And this table is basically going to organize how many moles are present at every step along the way. Okay, so to find how much we had before, what we're asking there is how many moles of my reactants and my products are present before the reaction occurs. Well, according to the problem, I have 77 grams of tricarbon hexahydride and 249 grams of oxygen. But I'm not going to say 77 and 249 because just like in you know what I called the grid before, you only deal with moles in a BCA table. That's very important. Only moles. So down here, I already worked out the math on converting my C3H6 into moles and my O2 gas into moles. Notice. O2, which is 32, not 16. Oxygen has a molar mass of 16, but oxygen gas, when it's present as, you know, in its diatomic form, oxygen, that's 32. So this is how much C3H6 I have before the reaction occurs. So I'm going to put this next to my B under my C3H6. So 1.83 moles. 
I have 7.78 moles of oxygen. That goes here, 7.78. How much of these do I have before the reaction occurs? Well, the reaction didn't happen yet, so I have zero. All right. So before the reaction, I have this many moles of my reactants and this many moles of my products. The C has changed. That's going to be how much of my reactants are going to be consumed and how much of my products are going to be produced. So we're going to end up subtracting a certain amount from this and adding a certain amount to this. Well, what you want to do now is find the limiting reactant because the limiting reactant is going to be fully consumed by this reaction. How do we find limiting reactant? Same thing you learned in those other videos. You take your number of moles here divided by the coefficient, number of moles here, divided by the coefficient. So 1.83 divided by 2 gives me 0.915. You might want to write that down somewhere, 0.915. And 7.78 divided by 9 gives me 0.68864. Uh, <clears throat> so once again, when I divided my... 1.83 by 2, I got this. When I divided my point, my 7.78 by 9, I got this. Whichever one of these is the smaller number tells you your limiting reactant. So the 0.864 is smaller. That was my O2, which tells me my O2 is my limiting reactant. And I'm going to write LR right above. Okay, so nothing new so far. Now let's start filling out this C for change. What's going to change here? Well, one of these is going to be completely depleted. Which one? The limiting reactant. So for this, I started with 7.78. I'm going to subtract 7.78, leaving me with after zero. So it's basic subtraction here. It's subtracting the moles. Now at this point, I can work on my product side or I can work on my reactant side. Let's work on the reactant side. So we need to figure out how much of my 1.83 is going to be depleted, how much is going to be consumed. Is all of it? No, because there's still going to be some excess reactant left over. So this is where those mole ratios come back into play. Notice the 9 to 2 mole ratio. How many times smaller is that from 9 to 2? Well, that's 4.5 times smaller. So I would take this number, which is how many moles here, and know that you're going to have 4.5 times fewer moles that react over here. Another way of doing this would be to put like an X, maybe temporarily, I'm not going to write it in Sharpie, put an X here and you're going to say 9 over 7.78 equals 2 over X. Notice I'm ignoring this. Why is that? Well, the 1.83, it doesn't actually have much significance at this point because it's going to be, it's more than we need. So I'm not saying I want to ignore it, but you're not going to use this to calculate how much gets removed. So I'm going to apply my four, uh, sorry, my uh, uh, nine to two ratio. I'm going to divide the 7.78 by 4.5, which gives me 1.73. And that means that if this much is going to be consumed here, four and a half times less or minus 1.73 moles will react on this side. Now, why did I make it minus? Because you're going to be consuming that much. That many moles are going to go away. So we then subtract the difference here. Looks like uh, a perfect 0 0.10 is going to be remaining. Now, what's the unit here? Moles, always moles. By the way, I added that zero there because when we subtract numbers, we consider decimal places. If you did this in your calculator, it would just say 0.1, but that would be wrong. You want 0 0.10. Okay, let's look on the product side. So over here, we want to figure out how much is going to form. Well, we can either apply a 9 to 6 ratio, which is a little tricky. That's like uh, divided by 1 and a half or 1 and a third. That's a little bit of a tricky one. Notice we have an easier option available. Since we already figured out the 9 to 2, we can now go from 2 to 6. We can just triple this number. Now, for how much reacted was my change. We're not going to deal with this number because that is our excess reactant. We're going to go with this number here. So I'm going to triple this number. Now you can also apply the 9 to 6 ratio using the x, but I'm just going to triple this number here. So 1.73 times 3 gives me 5.19. That's how much forms on this side. So instead of doing minus, I'm going to say plus. 
5.19. What's the unit? Moles. Since I started with nothing, I add this and I get 5.19. What about this one? Notice the 6 to 6 mole ratio. It's going to be the same thing. Plus 5.19 moles gives us 5.19 moles. This is called a BCA table. It takes a couple minutes to work out, but this is a great way of organizing what's happening in a double replacement reaction. And for certain problems, we're going to ask you to write one of these out because it really does fully explain what's happening. Okay, now let's look at the original question here up on the screen. Um, how many moles of each reaction in each product are present after the reaction? Well, that's just going to be your answer down here. So the answer is after this reaction occurs, you're going to have no oxygen left. You're going to have 0 0.10 moles of tricarbon hexahydride left, your excess reactant. And you're going to have 5.19 moles of both carbon dioxide and water. Now the problem could also ask you for grams, and all you would do is convert each of these to grams using molar mass. So that's how you work a BCA table. Let's do one more example um, where I actually kind of show, you know, a, a more thorough problem and show you why the BCA table is going to be helpful. Okay, so this is going to be a solution containing 220 point grams of calcium nitrate is added to a solution containing 99.5 grams of ammonium hydroxide. So double replacement. What mass of each product forms? Okay, now so far, maybe a BCA table is not necessarily needed because you're used to solving stoichiometry problems. This would just mean instead of one, you find both products. But look at letter B. What mass of the excess reactant remains? That's kind of the clue that I would use that, that tells you a BCA table is going to be really important here. Because without a BCA table, you can still solve it, but the BCA, t BCA table kind of beautifully organizes all of this. Letter C, if 630 grams of precipitate are collected, what is the percent yield? So that 630, that's going to be your uh, experimental yield. That's how much you collect. So what we're solving for here is the mass of the precipitate, which actually you already solved for in letter A. And finally, we're going to sketch it. So I've already laid out some of the pre-work for this problem. Here's my balanced equation. So calcium nitrate, ammonium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide and ammonium nitrate. Notice my precipitate is the solid calcium hydroxide. Uh, it's a one to two to one to two ratio. I've already worked out the moles of my two reactants. So I'm now going to make a BCA table right off the bat. So I go B, C, A like that. And I'm going to fill in my moles up here. So I have 1.34 moles of calcium nitrate, 1.34. I have 1.24 moles of ammonium nitrate. Hold on, something, what did I do wrong here? Whoops, it's not ammonium nitrate, it's ammonium hydroxide. Glad I caught that, which means my molar mass is gonna be off. Let me quickly check my ammonium hydroxide. So N is gonna be 28 point, uh, no, N is 14.01, I have, five H's plus five times 1.008 and I have one O molar mass is 35.05 35.05 which gives me 99.5 divided by 2.84 seems much more reasonable 2.84 moles. <clears throat> Let me just clarify what I did there. Uh, I had the wrong uh, thing down here, so I fixed the molar mass, uh, and that's how many moles I have. And this looks kind of more like a prepared limiting reactant type situation. So notice the 1 to 2 mole ratio. Um, to do this, I'm going to divide this number, uh, sorry, this number by that number this number by that number, see what gives me the smaller number that's the limiting reactant. So 2.84 divided by 2 is going to be 1.42. I can kind of work that one out. 1.42, yeah. Uh, let me compare 1.42 to 1.34. This is smaller. So because that's smaller, because this is divided by 1, that makes my calcium nitrate, my limiting reactant, and my ammonium hydroxide, my excess reactant. LR and ER are identified. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to now fill out the BCA table because the question asks me the mass of each product. I may as well do the full BCA table and then you just got to convert to grams. All right, so um, what do I want to do next? Ah, first, let me finish out the before. How much of my products do I have before this reaction occurs? None. I have zero of this and zero of that. For change, my limiting reactant gets fully consumed. So I'm going to subtract all of this minus 1.34, leaving us with nothing, zero. Now, how much of the excess is going to get used up? All of it? No, not all of it. But I do know that a one to two ratio is going to apply here. For every one of these, two of these will react. So if I'm reacting 1.34 moles of my calcium nitrate, twice as much of my excess is going to react. Well, what's twice as much of 1.34? That's going to be 2.68. If I do that, yeah. So it's a one to two ratio. So 2.68 moles are going to react. They're going to be consumed. So I'm going to subtract them out of this. How much is left over? That's going to be a four. That's going to be a two. That's going to be a zero. Zero point. That's not a four. I'm going the wrong way with it. Uh, one six. Yes. Oh, 0 0.16. And what's the unit here? Moles. Okay. Over on this side. Well, actually, notice we have a 1 to 1 ratio and a 2 to 2 ratio makes it really easy. As long as you trust these numbers, which I do, we can just carry those over. We're going to form... 1.34 moles of calcium hydroxide, giving us 1.34 moles. And we're going to form 2.68 moles of ammonium nitrate, giving us 2.68 moles. That's our BCA table. And this is a way to really nice and neatly organize what's happening in this problem. So now let's address the actual question. It says, what mass of each product forms? Well, we have numbers down here, but these are moles. Uh, all we need to do here is apply molar masses, which I pre-wrote down here. Hopefully I did these correctly. I think I did. Yeah. Uh, so I have 1.34 moles. I'm going to multiply that. That's moles of calcium hydroxide. I'm going to multiply that by the molar mass of calcium hydroxide. 1.34 times 74.09 gives me 99.28. I'll call it with three sig figs, 99.3 grams of calcium hydroxide, right there. My ammonium nitrate, it's 2.68 moles. I'm going to multiply that by the molar mass of ammonium nitrate, which according to my work before is 80.04 grams per mole. With three sig figs, 215 grams. Right there. Okay. For the, all right, so that's question A. That's the mass of each product that forms. Uh, letter B says, what mass of the excess re reactant remains? Well, I have 0.16, but what unit is that? That is moles. I'm looking for grams because I need mass. So all I do is multiply this by my ammonium hydroxide, which is 35.05. So 0.16 times 35.05. Now for sig figs, I am limited now to two sig figs. Even though I originally had three, I'm limited to just two and you want to stick with that. So I got 5.608. I'm going to call that 5.6 grams. And what mass of my limiting reactant remains? That's a trick question we love throwing at you. It's always going to be zero. The limiting reactant's fully used up during the reaction. Okay. Uh, letter C says, if 630 grams of precipitate are collected, what is the percent yield? Uh, something, I think. You know what? I meant, I definitely meant to say 63.0. Yeah, because if you know, you can sometimes get a little bit more than 100% yield if you mess something up. This would be like 500% yield. Okay, 63.0. So if 63.0 grams of precipitate formed, what's the percent yield? Well, we wanted, we should have gotten 99.3. We actually got 63. So we're going to go 
63.0 grams divided by 99.3 grams. Units cancel, we multiply that by 100 and uh, the unit is simply percent. 63 over 99.3 gives us point, uh, 0.634, which is gonna be 63.4% percent yield. See how we're just rattling these off? Once we do the BCA table to organize it, we're able to just boom, boom, rapid fire through these the rest of these questions. And finally, we're gonna sketch it. So let me grab a new sheet of paper to sketch this one. All right, so in our sketches for double replacements, we're gonna do beaker number one plus beaker number two yields beaker number three, kind of like that. In my first beaker, I'm gonna have my two ions, so it's calcium nitrate aqueous, meaning I'm gonna write Ca2 plus and NO3 minus floating around. My second beaker, I have ammonium hydroxide. Whoops, that's NH4 with a plus charge, that's ammonium. And the hydroxide is OH minus. In my final beaker here, I have my solid calcium hydroxide, which settles to the bottom as a precipitate. So I like to do my little line over it there. And floating above that is my aqueous reactant, uh, sorry, my aqueous product, ammonium nitrate, which is NH4 plus and NO3 minus. Now, where did I get all that information? Well, in my equation, I have my calcium nitrate aqueous right here. I have my ammonium hydroxide aqueous here. I have my solid calcium hydroxide here, and I have my aqueous ammonium nitrate here. Now let's add, actually before we add our waters, there's one last thing I need to add to this, and that's gonna be my excess reactant. I need to make sure that both of these ions are present in my supernatant here. It's a term I didn't use in the last video, I should have. The supernatant is the liquid above the precipitate that has the um, aqueous ions. So I need to make sure I have ammonium and hydroxide ions. Now, if you're doing it this way, you're always gonna already have one of them, you just gotta add one more. So notice I already have ammonium, all I'm gonna add is hydroxide, OH minus. Notice I'm not gonna add any more calcium. The calcium is fully used up in, it's locked away in this precipitate. And what would happen if there were any extra calcium up here? Well, the calcium would find this hydroxide and form more solid. So it makes sense that all of the calcium is gonna be locked up. Two last things I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna add my waters. And remember, they point towards the positive ions and away from the negative ions. So you wanna do a couple of these per ion, something like that. And the last thing we're gonna put is a little disclaimer, does not obey the law of conservation of mass because this shows which ions are present but not the proportions in which they're present. So that's our final sketch for this one. Okay, so I hope that helped. Remember a BCA table is not required for every um, stoichiometry problem, but it is suggested if you're looking for things like the mass of the excess re reactant that remains and you also just have to know it in general, we might just ask for it. Um, in certain problems. Okay, good luck everyone.